You're listening to the Onside Podcast, the podcast for innovation-driven entrepreneurship here in Atlantic Canada. I'm your host, Alex McCann, and this is Season 2, Episode 11, and the theme this month is Out of the Lab and Into the Market, Creating a Company. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Rafaela Andrade, co-founder and CEO of Myomar Molecular. She moved to Canada from Brazil in 2009 to start her graduate studies in cancer research, where she was awarded prestigious scholarships and prizes for research and innovation. She's been working with molecular biology techniques, managing projects, and developing innovative techniques to improve research outcomes and collaborations for over a decade. Rafaela's vision is to translate scientific discovery into public health. She's looking to bridge the gap between patients and science and to create collaborations between governments, industry, and academia. She's now a mother of three, passionate about health and fitness, and is dedicated to growing the company and improving people's quality of life. Rafaela, welcome to the Onside Podcast. So happy that you could join us here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really excited to have you here today. I'm really looking forward to diving in and learning more about how you created your company and all those kinds of things. And our theme today is really about kind of moving out of the lab and into the market and that journey of sort of creating your company. But before we kind of dive into that, maybe could you tell us a little bit of a little short background about yourself and a little bit about your research and your studies? Um, Okay, so I'm originally from Brazil. Um, I came to Nova Scotia in 2009 to do a PhD, and I did my PhD in biochemistry at Dow, and I continue with a postdoc fellowship uh, as well at Dow. And then when I switched to my postdoc fellowship, I started studying muscle and uh, muscle metabolism, and that's how the company foundation started. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. So because I, I, when we spoke before, I know you were doing a lot of cancer research and you jumped into this postdoc and did something a little different and around muscle health. What what got you interested into muscle health? Yeah. So initially I was interested because I want to switch a little bit my fields from breast cancer, studying breast cancer in my PhD uh, and move to another field to learn more about another system. And I chose muscle. Um but also because I had personal experiences being uh, with pregnancies, I gained a lot of weight, and then I decided to have a more healthy, uh, active life. Mm-hmm. And the muscle is very uh, connected with uh, fitness and wellness. So you need to have a healthy muscle system mm-hmm. to be a healthy person. Mm-hmm. And also um, life expectancy goes hand to hand with your muscle health as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I became really interested how I study muscle could improve wellness and fitness mm-hmm. and um, mental health as well. Um, yeah, so that that was like what got me into mm-hmm. uh, started a company that was focused on muscle. Muscle yeah. health. Okay. Yeah. Well, definitely muscle health is super important for uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. I have to say that uh, I probably could personally do a little bit more with developing my muscle health. So I'm really looking forward to learning more about your uh, company and um, kind of the the journey. And uh, you talked a little bit about some of the things that are important for a good quality of life related to muscle health. But how did you actually decide to you know, you were a researcher working in a lab, postdoc, you had kids and all that kind of good stuff and all the things you got to do just to manage your life. What kind of made you want to start a company? And maybe you can tell our audience the name of your company and, and how you got that name. But like, what made you want to have a company? Yeah, so I always want to do translation research, and I was interested to see how my basic science would translate into society and help people to live better. And then when I started looking into muscle, I and I also was really interested um, on the aging process mm. too. So when people age, they lose a lot of muscle and they become weak, and that increases their chance of having a fall. And once you have a fall, your quality of life decreases drastically. Um, and you ended up being hospitalized. You'll be in the hospital for numbers of days. also increases mm-hmm. your muscle loss. And so people, when they leave the hospital, you have this long rehabilitation process. Even if you are young, the rehabilitation process mm-hmm. can take years for you to build the muscle that you lost. 
And then I became interested in how muscle atrophy mm -hmm. would play a role into quality of life mm -hmm. and how you could detect the, that muscle atrophy in early stages before you have a physical challenge that you have to go through. So when we detect muscle atrophy in early stages, we can do things to prevent sarcopenia which is a disease that relates with muscle loss, but also loss of strength as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You ended up having high chances of folly and having other diseases such as osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, and, uh, for example, knee replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, nowadays are very um, connected with osteoarthritis mm -hmm. and osteoarthritis depends highly on your muscle health as well. Yeah. So it, everything's connected and... Um, when I started looking into muscle and aging, I became really interested how we could detect that in early stages and find markers, biomarkers, molecular markers mm -hmm. that would be present on your body at early stages so that we could find those biomarkers and do something about it to prevent the disease to progress mm -hmm. and become worse over time. This is really uh, interesting to me. My my mom has uh, osteoporosis, so she is uh, very thin and uh, is not very active and has a lot of uh, muscle loss. Um, and and uh, you know that's something you're you're always worried about as you get older is uh, just movement, mobility. And you're right if you uh, fall or hurt yourself and you end up in the hospital and you're not mobile, then it it kind of is it precipitates yeah, yeah yeah increases right uh the muscle loss and i, I guess I've, a lot of people have um a senior in the family that ended up falling mm -hmm. and just after that uh die from complications of the fall my grandmother my own grandmother some uh some of my aunts as well mm -hmm. uh experienced falls mm -hmm. uh that ended up leading to the death mm -hmm. after uh, couple of weeks mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. just by being in the hospital and all the other organs start failing as well when you are older too yeah um, yeah lack of lack of mobility uh, my grandmother is a hundred years old um, wow. she I think the reason why she has partially uh, been able to uh, be around this long is that she had knee replacement surgery when she was she was in a terrible car accident and when she was in her like late 60s she got knee replacement surgery so She's uh, about 100, but she's got 40-year-old knees hmm. uh, helping her to walk around and, and maintain mobility. So she's very mobile and yeah. then she exercises and walks. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, she's, uh, yeah she's a firecracker <laughs> for, 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 for being 100 years old. But, yeah. but I think that's a pretty like, unusual kind yeah, of rare. situation. Yes. You know? But like, literally her knees are probably 40 years old, you know. But how did you decide to um, – so you, you were interested in this, but how did you actually decide to – create a company? I mean, a lot of people are interested in translational research or interested in a, in a something. I mean, you could have just stayed in the lab and just wrote a whole bunch of papers. You're, you know, you're a researcher. Why, why didn't you do that? Yeah. So it would be much easier <laughs> to <laughs> stay in the lab and <laughs> then continue my postdoc fellowship. But I decided to take the <laughs> hardest path. <laughs> yeah. So one day I was in a lunchroom uh, at Tao and uh, my co-founder, at the time, he was <laughs> a student, a PhD student, okay. and we see each other in this lab pretty much daily, but it, from that point, we never talk more than two words. We just say hi and bye. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your co-founder. Yeah, that's okay. my co-founder. Okay. And then I was in this room having lunch, and then he came in, which he never comes in mm -hmm. to, to a lunch room at the, at the lab. He was there, and I was there too, and we were just talking about uh, what's after mm -hmm. he finished his PhD and what's after for me after I finished my postdoc. And I said, I'm really interested into translational research, but I don't know how to kind of continue on, mm -hmm. on that road and he's like yeah i'm actually interested in entrepreneurship too and, and like translational okay. uh, research and i said why would we don't sit together and uh, talk about ideas how we could commercialize the research we are working on and he was doing neuroscience degree and i also we study muscle too mm -hmm. and i was i was studying like more molecular science muscle he studying more movement mm -hmm. muscle with uh, the nervous system so I said, well, we just like sit in a room and uh, brainstorm ideas of how we can commercialize our research. Mm. And he said, okay, sure. So we just like decided one day to sit in a room and brainstorm ideas. And we started writing on a paper, like a bunch of ideas, how we could commercialize the research. And I said, well, I have uh, these 
animal model where we find that uh, they have early stage muscle atrophy. And I was thinking if we could detect early markers of muscle atrophy in this animal model to pursue diagnostics of muscle atrophy. And he said, oh, this is a great idea. So how are we going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, how are we going to do that? Uh -huh. uh, and then I said, well, let me look into if I can find like any type of um, grants that we can apply to, right? Mm -hmm. And then see if we can pay for the research and then start looking into those markers. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, so next day I heard about Lab to Market, a uh, DAO, uh -huh. like a program, a DAO, it's right. called Lab to Market. And I went to talk to him and I said, look, I found this information about a Lab to Market program that mm -hmm. you apply and you have like $5,000 to pay for research. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think that $5,000 will pay for the research that I need to find a couple of markers of muscle atrophy. And he's like, okay, so let's apply for the grant. And that was like on a Tuesday and the grant was due on Friday. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so this person that I just talked high and by mm -hmm. for like mm -hmm. several years mm -hmm. sat with me for like uh, four days straight where we wrote a grant together. Oh, wow. Like, for several hours writing this grant and I didn't know anything about his life and he didn't know anything <laughs> about my life, but we were very passionate about entrepreneurship. So we connected and then we applied for the grant uh, a few weeks after we got it. And then he at the time was applying to medical school. Okay. So I decided I was going to take the grant because one person needed to do the program. So I, I took the program. Okay. And then with the money, we paid for some experiments that I needed uh, to complete that uh, study. And when, when we showed that we could find the specific markers of uh, muscle atrophy and muscle degeneration in animal models, then I started thinking about like moving into humans and proof that we could find those markers, proof concept that we could find those markers in humans as well. Um, and so I correlate that with a physical health, physical mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. and monitoring of muscle loss as mm -hmm. well. So, and then just after I I started Lab to Market, I discovered that I had to do a hundred interviews. Oh, wow. Because at that point, I did, when I applied, I didn't know about the interviews. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, well, you have to talk to a hundred people in the field to see if your idea it is a solution that you want to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so... So then I started like digging into all my social contacts, my network to find people that I could talk to, like physiotherapists, medical right. doctors, people that had knee replacements, uh -huh. patients, veterinarians as well, because there is a market in the vet, in the vet demographics. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to people all around the world, like from Europe, okay. uh, from South America, from North America. And a, a lot of uh, people in the health side, mm -hmm. but I also uh, just patients and people that had muscle injuries. Uh, my co-founder as well had a very serious injury where he had to be in the hospital for a few months. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, from his own experience, he took like years to recover from the muscle loss that wow. he, he had when he was at the hospital mm -hmm. uh, from an accident. So then we, after I finished that program and then we discovered that it was a solution that people needed because mm -hmm. there is nothing right now available that can detect muscle loss that's accessible and people can use on at home. So there isn't anything available right now. It's not like a test, a blood test as well that's right. available. There isn't anything available for muscle health. Uh, it's not like a cholesterol test, for mm -hmm. example, that you can take uh, and then you know about your heart health. Right, right. And you can do things about uh, cholesterol levels to to keep healthy. With muscle, there isn't anything available. So that's what we are creating now in the company. It's an accessible tool to detect muscle loss at early stage. Mm -hmm. And that will translate into your muscle health, how you can improve that muscle health over time with diet, exercise, mm -hmm. uh, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to provide as well an application that will you, uh, inform you what you need to do mm -hmm. with the number you get to improve that number to become healthier. Interesting. Yeah. That is super interesting, especially uh, your uh, unexpected uh, customer discovery. I'm sure probably going out to get a, a hundred different point of views yeah. <laughs> uh, was fun. And, and I love that you didn't limit it to kind of just right here and you kind of sought that sort of uh, global perspective. And so it sounds like you got validation from that idea. And then did you take that straight back to lab to market and kind of work on your early 
I guess, prototype or you're, you're just sort of scoping out um, what uh, it possibly could be? So uh, just after I finished uh, Lab to Market, then I decided, well, I'm going to incorporate the company. Mm. So then I went to my co-founder. At the time, it was just a person that wrote a grant okay, with me. Okay, okay. <laughs> that you only spoke to like, once every, like, uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> once in a while. And I, I told him, look, I want to start a company out of this. I think there is value into what we are developing here. And I invited him to be part of the company. And I said, I think we should sit and have a, like a conversation. So I know a little bit about you, you and mm-hmm. you know a little bit mm-hmm. about me. And we had like a little conversation just to know more about each other. And then he decided to join the company. But at the same time, he was accepted into medical school in, oh, okay. in Toronto. So okay. he's uh, UFT right now in Toronto doing medical school. So he has a small percentage in the company. And uh, he's the person that I go to for all the bad and the good <laughs> that I can keeping call. Keeping it real. Keeping exactly. it real. Uh-huh. Someone that I can call to tell all these stories that happens in my day to day. But then I, I went to another program called Red to Lounge where we actually learn how to be entrepreneur. So we okay. do step by step learning how to be an entrepreneur. There's a journey that we go through that teaches a lot about how to build a business plan, mm-hmm. how to build a business model, how to present a pitch, mm-hmm. a pitch deck, mm-hmm, all, mm-hmm. all this. So we, we got that training. And is and ready to launch as a program from Dow. From Dow as well. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah. And after I finished that, we decided to start building the prototype. Mm-hmm. And that's when we applied to Idea Hub at Dow as well. Okay. Which give you a, like a small budget of $10,000 to build a prototype. Okay. So we started building the prototype with Idea Hub just after I finished the other program. Okay. So you're, you're building like a, because uh, the Amir Idea Hub is mostly focused on kind of physical products. So you started yeah. scoping a out hardware. a physical yeah. diagnostic tool. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then we went from the experiments in the lab to build something that would detect those biomarkers that we found. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, we applied to a different grants at the time, and we got InnovaCorp Accelerate Grant, no, an early stage a commercialization grant, and also MyTex, okay, yeah. which then allow me to work full time for the company. Okay. So then in December uh, last year, I finished my postdoc fellowship and start full time in the company mm-hmm. in January 2022. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm working full time for the company now for seven months. Okay. Yeah. From the time that you and your co-founder, who barely spoke to each other, <laughs> and then you applied for that very first grant like four days later till now, like how much time has it been? Because it sounds like so fast. It sounds yeah. like, you know, you you guys, it's kind of just like a spark. You happen to have this conversation because you could have just gone in two totally different directions. Yeah. You had this conversation that sparked. On that day, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for that day, I don't think we ever would connect again because he would go to medical school yeah. and I would stay in my postdoc fellowship and uh-huh. maybe move to another place. But yeah. So that day that we had the conversation was that we applied to lab to market was December 2020. Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a year and a half. It's oh, like a lot. Right? Yeah. A year and a half. Yeah. yeah. So so you did uh, the lab to market, uh, ready to launch, InnovaCore grant, and yeah. then and my tax and. You've done all of those things, but you're also involved, or you have been involved with what else have you been involved with here here yeah. in the province? So I also, in December, I also pitched to Volta. So okay. we are now part of Volta cohort. Okay. And we have a small investment from Volta, okay. the company. And uh, I was just graduated from CDL, Creative Destruction Lab. So okay. I was accepting to CDL and I met wonderful people at CDL and there was a huge opportunity that opened so many doors for mm-hmm. me. We got, uh, we are finishing up right now our first round of investment mm-hmm. and um, most of the investors right now are from CDL. Oh, great. And they were my mentors since the beginning. So they have been following me for eight months now mm-hmm. and I meet with them regularly and I talk about the company, the goals, the milestones that I want to reach and they help me to, to complete those um, mm-hmm. those milestones and uh, they are investors in the company now and we're just ready to close that round very soon. So the plan originally was to raise $350,000. We haven't closed completely yet the round. For the next week or so, mm-hmm. I will announce the closing of the round. Okay. 
we just got the equity tax credit. Oh, so great. anyone that invests in the company from Nova Scotia can get tax credit mm -hmm. uh, back, 45% back, which is a great that's incentive great. from yeah. the province. Yeah, and the, I think that's kind of fairly new. Yes, are, so yeah, the province years. Yeah. are really um, supporting entrepreneurs and biotech companies mm -hmm. uh, as uh, the new uh, boom, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the, the biotech industry here. Uh, and that support actually allow us to raise over over half of our round with that support. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so glad to hear that because it's a few years ago, it was just kind of a dream that this tax credit would be uh, put in place. And it's it's great to hear that folks are actually being able to utilize it and that it has a, a meaningful impact on sort of the trajectory of uh, your company and, and bringing in uh, investors. And it's great that uh, CDL has been uh, so helpful. I've, I've had the chance to go to a CDL session or two and, and watch all the companies. Uh, intense, pitch. right? It's very <laughs> intense. I was like, I'm sure glad I'm in the audience here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really intense and um, never acting as well because we're talking to these business people that are very high up in their career and uh, they are very knowledgeable of like, uh, the business world, right? And me as a scientist, it's very intimidating to mm -hmm. go in a room uh, surrounded by business people that are very mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. But they are also very uh, humble in a way that we can ask questions and uh, tell the truth, mm -hmm. the good and the bad, mm -hmm. and they will help you through the journey. So I connect really well with my mentors. And um, yeah, some of them are in my board of advisors too. Yeah. And I also want to mention that when I switched from academia to business, I didn't think I was going to find a lot of support in the business world. But I was surprised that the support that I have in the business world was, it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, I can just call someone that's a CEO from a large company mm -hmm. and tell them that I need a device on this. And mm -hmm. he'll open doors and talk to me and uh, give contact his network. Mm -hmm. So one of my mentors is Paul and Pei from Precision Biologic. Yeah. And he's been a great mentor. He's my friend and he's been so supportive since the beginning. Yeah. He actually joined Ready to Launch uh, specifically to be my mentor. Oh, wow. I didn't know that until oh. I finished, but he heard he heard about me from someone else yeah. and he asked to join Ready to Launch to be my mentor. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So Paul uh, it's a, it's a great friend and it's a very successful CEO. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's doing amazing things at Precision. Yeah, and he's the main advisor in the company. Okay. Well, you're you're, you're right. I think you mentioned this a, a moment or two ago, but the, the life sciences sector in Nova Scotia and the region has been growing over the, the last couple of years. And there's uh, quite a few companies that are in the, the med tech space as well. And so I think the network of uh, mentors and you know people who have been kind of down that path that's that's been growing. So it's it's really great to to hear that you're benefiting and that the community is kind of stepping up to help young new companies come out. Uh, yeah. that's that's really important. And it's really really exciting. So you're you're now at Volta, which is very exciting. But so people who are listening in, Volta is a tech accelerator that's uh, downtown here in Halifax. Really great place. We've had some some guests from there before, and you're starting to to grow and develop your company. So what is that like now? So we know for for innovation based kind of companies, you mentioned a little bit about getting. Um, the investment, but there are other things that you're doing as well. So you're kind of like building a team and marketing and like, what are, what are all the things that you have to think about now? Because now, now you're out of the lab. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're now out of the lab. So what do you have? What are some kinds of things that, that companies um, like yours have to do now? I feel like my main job now is to, to be that chain that holds the entire team together because I have a lot of wheels running at the same time. Mm. So I have a clinical team. I have uh, scientists i work on the technology, the chemistry components, and I have engineers that are building the hardware. Mm -hmm. And I have to be able to talk to all these people and translate my vision to their perspectives. Mm -hmm. So I feel that now I'm learning. I have this role of keeping everybody in track and everybody together to accomplish the same goal, but developing different things. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the clinical side right now, we are going to run um, a pilot trial uh, with samples from people that are going to the gym and test with, with those. So we just have like a collaboration now with Evolve Fitness in Halifax, on sites across fit uh, mm -hmm. as well, fitness here in Halifax as well. And we are planning to run a 
clinical trial in Nova Scotia and as well in Newfoundland. Oh, so mm-hmm. Newfoundland has a lot of support too. Mm-hmm. We are part of Bounce Innovation. Mm-hmm. And Bounce as well opened a lot of doors for us mm-hmm. to to meet entrepreneurs and the industry in Newfoundland that's growing. So just I, I mentioned in the last episode that we went to Newfoundland and in Newfoundland we uh, found uh, very good partners that are going to work with us uh, to deliver the clinical trial. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're really excited to work with uh, Newfoundland partners to do their clinical trial. Yeah, so just like that, putting things in motion now that we have the company set up to accomplish the goals, the next step, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. That sounds, it's so busy. Like there's so many pieces. And you have to wear a lot of hats too. Like when I started, I said, well, a CEO just need to organize the company. (laughs) 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 And now I have to learn about finance. I have to learn about accounting. I have to have a little understanding of the law too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm, We just submitted a patent application, which is a great marathon, yay. Exciting. (laughs) So our patent application was submitted just last month. And then I had to learn a lot about patent and what's in the law mm-hmm. and uh, how to write that patent too. Mm-hmm. So I work with a law patent for a couple uh, months to write that patent application. And you have to also protect your IP. Mm-hmm. So the way you talk, you have to be very conscious of what you are going to say mm-hmm. because you have to protect that IP. Yeah. Yeah. So it's learning about pieces, little pieces from each one of the moving wheels that you have to move. Yeah. And and uh, you mentioned your uh, your team. Is your team at Volta as well, or are people kind of in different places? And how has it been to manage a team and grow a team during COVID? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my team is spread across. So we have some people at, that's working at Dalhousie with NRC support. Mm-hmm. And then we have myself at Volta mainly right now. And we have the clinical team as well. That's uh, collaborators that are working in the hospital to mm-hmm. run the clinical trial and get the clinical trial going. And we are now very soon growing the team as well. Mm-hmm. So we're going to announce job opportunities in the company. Oh, great. Excellent. So be in tune for that. Okay. So we'll, we'll be soon announcing that. Okay. So by the end of the year, uh, we probably we're gonna have five to six people working the company okay. full time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a huge milestone. And um, you know, uh, it sounds like you're putting all the pieces together. You're getting the team together. You uh, working on various patents and IP and all those other kinds of things. Um, is there something that you want to achieve in the next? Um, I guess in the next year or so. Or what's the what's the next thing you're I feel like in such a short amount of time, Mm -hmm. you've done so many things, but I know with a a startup, you're just constantly, you know, moving ahead and kind of pushing ahead. What's the next thing for you? Yeah. So we are now uh, improving the technology to be more accessible. Mm -hmm. So in a year from now, I want to have an accessible tool that you can use at home. You can test yourself. Right now, all the tests has to be done in a lab space. Mm -hmm. And we're transitioning now from the lab to a more individualized use where you can use the technology at home without having to be in a lab space. Got it. Yeah. So in a year, we're going to do that. And uh, the following year, we want to have early adopters started using the technology. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this going to be the kind of thing? So this will be the kind of product that uh, someone such as myself uh, or my mother or, or somebody else could use for in home use type situations at some point in the future. Yeah. So in the, in the near future, you want to have like individualized tests, just like a pregnancy test mm-hmm. where you can take it home mm-hmm. and then know your muscle health. And we're going to have an uh, application on your phone to give you information on how you improve that muscle health Yeah. based on the data that we receive from your individualized test. Yeah. So it'll be a very personalized action plan for you. Yeah. I I think if it's going to be made available for my mother, we need to get her up to speed on how to use her iPhone and apps first. (laughs) (laughs) That's not her. That's not her top (laughs) skill. That's not her top skill. But uh, always interested in, you know, developing uh, muscle health and all those other kinds of things. (laughs) Well, I've been so pleased to hear and learn more about your company. I have a quick question that we like to try to throw out and get some responses to for all of our guests that are joining us um, here on the Onside podcast because we're focused on innovation-driven entrepreneurship and love to hear stories about great new startups that are making this track. And it's really been interesting to hear 
about your journey coming out of the lab and out of research, wanting to have an impact directly into the community, into society, and how you kind of thought about creating a company focused on muscle health. I loved hearing about your co-founder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one day I hope to, to meet him when he comes back from uh, Toronto or wherever he might be. But one thing we're always curious about is we're we're talking about innovation driven entrepreneurship as kind of a a driver for economic and and social change. So what does innovation driven entrepreneurship mean to you? Um that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to trick you up. <laughs> um I think it it means to me that it's a it allows me to make change to the world as I see. So if I can have entrepreneurship-driven world that will find innovation and create different ways of doing life, right? Mm -hmm. And improve the life as we see right now. Mm -hmm. So I always, I will see myself as someone that doesn't always fit on a specific box. Mm -hmm. I always want to create the lifestyle that I, I want to. Mm -hmm. for my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I, f I think entrepreneurship, put that in motion, gives you the space to create, to innovate, to motivate mm -hmm. people to become better and uh, give the world a better chance to, to be better, I guess. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. Well, that's been really great. I'm so glad that you came in to talk with us and share your story and share your journey. If people want to learn a little bit more about you or your company, Myomar, uh, how can they find out about you? What's the best way to connect with you? So LinkedIn, Rafael Andrade, and the uh, company has a website, myomarmolecular.ca. Okay. And what does myomar mean? I forgot to ask you that. So myo is the protein of the muscle, myosin. Oh, so, yeah. And mar means ocean in Portuguese. Okay. So we wanna... I knew that second part. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you want to like bring the uh, ocean aspect of living by the ocean. Me in Brazil that grew up by the ocean. My co-founder is a surfer, so he loves... Uh, the ocean uh -huh. too. He's very connected to the ocean. Uh -huh. uh, so we, we just put Mar as a remind okay. what do we love. That's the ocean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I'm a Pisces, so I just swim, swim through life. I swim through life. Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, and for, for all of our uh, listeners that are out there, you can uh, subscribe to our onside podcast. That'd be great. And you can learn more about us and our inclusive innovation monitor on our website, which is onside.com now.ca. And as we come to a close, I'd really like to thank Communities, Culture, and Heritage for your support. We're so grateful for your support and helping us make this podcast. Thank you. This has been a Podstarter production. production.